Hey friends, how you doing? Hope you're doing well. Ash here with Gin Sense. Today I'm talking to you guys about my top five favorite fragrances from Dolce & Gabbana for men. So the top five best from Dolce & Gabbana in my opinion. Your opinion may differ. <clears throat> Couple things, I am not including discontinued fragrances here. So fragrances that are gone in the annals of history from yesteryear, they're not gonna be in this list, although uh, some of them could be. And I'm also not including the Velvet line of fragrances. Some of you may or may not know what that is. They're basically Dolce & Gabbana's higher end, more exclusive fragrances. So not including these either. So we're just talking about the main lines of fragrances here. The one, Pour Homme, Light Blue, K, you get the drift. Let's jump into it. Also, before I go over the number one fragrance, I'll mention some other ones that I feel like you should know about, even though they're not in my personal top five. All right, let's kick it off. Number five, Dolce & Gabbana is the one Eau de Parfum Intense. Not to be confused with Dolce & Gabbana is the one Gold Eau de Parfum Intense. They kind of ran out of name ideas, I guess, I don't know. So the one Eau de Parfum Intense, it has that idea, that feeling, that vibe that the one should have, which is being a fragrance that's sweet, sexy, and seductive. Cardamom is going to be one of the main players in here. That really helps, of course, with the spiciness and a bit of sweetness as well. But with this fragrance, you're also going to find Cashmere, Neroli, Benzoin, and Leather among the note breakdown. So it's this sort of modern, slightly more versatile twist on the One Eau de Parfum. Smells really nice, one of the better The One flankers that's come out um, ever. Number four is from the Light Blue line, and it's Light Blue Oh Intense. Now this fragrance has been hyped off and on since it came out. Lots of people love this one, and for good reason. It's gonna give you a, a sea salty take on the light blue DNA, along with amber woods in the base. We also have a citrus combination here of grapefruit and mandarin orange, along with a good dose of juniper as well. This one to me, one of the best in the entire light blue line. There have been a lot of forgettable ones in the light blue line, which makes sense because they come out with one every single summer. So sometimes it, it just kind of misses the mark. Light blue O intense for me bumped the light blue line up a bit because all the flankers that came before it, while they were they were fine, they were passable, there was nothing wrong with them, they maybe weren't attention grabbing. It wasn't something where every year you were like, oh, I gotta check that out. I gotta see what they did this year. When O Intense came out, that's what it did for the light blue line. It made it where everybody kind of sat up and took notice again. Not to say that everything after this was great because there were some trash flankers after this one, but this one's still really, really, really good. So this one, spring, summertime, daytime, use office safe as well. Number three, we're back to the one again. It's Dolce & Gabbana's The One Royal Knight. This is one of their exclusive edition Middle Eastern flankers of which there are a few. The One Royal Knight was the first that kind of kicked off this new line of flankers uh, in The One. It has cardamom, amber, sandalwood, and nutmeg, it again retains that spiciness, that sweetness that you would expect from a fragrance in the the one line with a nice woodsy undertone here that's amped up compared to the original. The performance for me is quite good as well because the one line doesn't always have great performance going back to this one. Gold Eau de Parfum Intense, not so much. Performance on this is crap, as far as projection goes anyway. But here with Royal Knight, no such issues. It is a fragrance like the others in this line that sometimes is a little bit more difficult to find than your, your more typical mainline releases from Dolce & Gabbana because of that Middle Eastern exclusivity. But you can still regularly find this one for a price that's decent. So the one Royal Knight, number three, on to number two. And this one was pretty difficult, you know, to choose between two and one. I went back and forth a little bit. Five, four, and three, pretty easy for me to rank, but this was harder. Number two, I'm going with Light Blue Forever. Now I've talked about this a bunch. This is my favorite in the Light Blue line. 
Owen Tents got bumped down when this came out. It's the opening that I love so much. Grapefruit and bergamot, but it's especially that grapefruit. It's, it's very grindy and realistic and quite natural, way more than you would expect from a Dolce & Gabbana light blue. You also have ozonic notes, which adds to that freshness, that airiness in the opening of the fragrance. As it dries down, you get some vetiver and musk. It is a little bit safer in the dry down as compared to the opening, but I still like the dry down just as well. Well, not, not as well as the opening. Uh, the opening I'm in love with, but the dry down I still like. That's what I mean. Obviously, this is gonna be more of a summertime fragrance, springtime as well. And as an added bonus, my wife absolutely loves this scent. Now, with all that being said, if you don't like citrus notes that do have that, that sort of contrast, that tartness with sweetness, freshness with a bit of bitterness, that rindiness that I mentioned, you probably won't like this one. But if you do like that, check this one out. It is one of my favorite releases of 2021. I think Dolce & Gabbana absolutely crushed it. Light Blue Forever is awesome. Now, before we do the number one, some mentions, and I've got six of them here, so I'm gonna try to go through pretty quickly. First off, uh, the one Luminous Night and the one Mysterious Night. Both of these fragrances are very good. In fact, the one Luminous Night, I might even like a little bit more than Royal Night. It's close. The issue with Luminous Night is this is really, really hard to find. So it almost becomes one of those things where I don't want to necessarily put it into the top five because it's really, really, really difficult to find. Uh, so I, I fall into this thing where it's like, well, if I'm not including discontinued fragrances because discontinued fragrances are impossible to find, I probably shouldn't include this because it might as well be discontinued right now. I don't say that saying that it is discontinued or whatever. I just mean with how hard it is to find if you're in the United States. But the one luminous night, if this were to suddenly pop up at discounters or stores in the US somewhere where you could get your hands on it, I would say you could probably put this in at number three. And then the one mysterious night, this is uh, a rose oud saffron take on the one. So if you like fragrances of that ilk, of that style, because it is a very common Middle Eastern style, you know, with saffron rose oud, it's like the trifecta of fragrance notes for a number of scents, then this one would be for you. I think that the quality here is great. The fragrance is very nice, but as far as the exclusive fragrances go, I would take Royal Night or Luminous Night over that one. Then the one gray, I think you need to know about this. I'm kind of in a minority here. I think the One Gray is really nice. This is a vetiver based fragrance. It's basically taking the One and dialing down that, that sex appeal that it has a bit, dialing down that sweetness and putting in a clean gray vetiver note into the fragrance and making that more prominent. So basically you take the One and you dilly dally with it, mess around with it and turn it into an office kind of fragrance. That's basically what this is. So while I really like it, I think it's a great casual fragrance and office safe as well and, and potentially wearable in more formal situations also. Uh, a bunch of people didn't really like this one because they thought it was maybe a little too bland. Then we have Dolce & Gabbana's K Eau de Parfum. As far as the two K fragrances available now, the Eau de Toilette and the Eau de Parfum, I think this is the one that you should own between the two. Basically, it takes the Eau de Toilette and improves on it in pretty much every way imaginable, at least in my opinion. To date, I'm not an enormous fan of the K line. I think that you gotta put the YSL Y line above it, Blue de Chanel, Dior Sauvage, even like Dior Homme 2020, all of those slot in above this. And I would say that Lome Rojas is probably a better bet as far as having a, a similar fragrance style, but being much cheaper over K. But K Eau de Parfum, for a lot of people, is going to be an extremely solid, hyper versatile type of fragrance. So you should at least know about it, but it doesn't make my top five. Then of course, you gotta know about Dolce Gabbana Pour Homme. This is a classic masculine fragrance, makes heavy use of lavender and tobacco. It smells really nice, but if possible, you'd be better off getting a vintage bottle. Problem with that is, it's gonna run you a lot more, obviously harder to find. Easiest way to determine that, or, or one of the things you could look for is uh, the front. If you have a nice little sticker on the front, uh, then that is a vintage bottle. So Dolce & Gabbana Pour Homme, I think this is a really nice fragrance, better suited for middle-aged guys and older. Performance is so-so, but not in my top five of Dolce & Gabbana scents. And frankly, I would take this over that nowadays. This is Intenso 
obviously also Dolce & Gabbana. Very similar scent profile to Pour Homme, but in my opinion, improved. That is not an opinion that everybody shares, but this is a fragrance that I wore, I couldn't even tell you how many times to the office. It's just so simple and easy to pull off. Again, very similar uh, scent profile to the original, which makes sense. This is a uh, flanker after all. And a lot of people actually would say that between those two fragrances, Intenso will get you a little bit closer, not the same obviously, but a little bit closer to vintage Dolce & Gabbana Pour Homme than just Dolce & Gabbana Pour Homme would. So those you also need to know about, but now let's go to the number one. Probably not a big surprise at this point, but it's the one Eau de Parfum, which means that of my top five Dolce & Gabbana fragrances, three are in the one line and two are in the light blue line, which does make sense because really that's what Dolce & Gabbana seems to concentrate on. You've got a new light blue flanker every year. You've got a new the one flanker pretty much every year. That just seems to be where Dolce & Gabbana is, is putting their concentration, their effort, their maximum effort anyway, the one in light blue, and it's reflected here. This has amber, tobacco, ginger, cardamom, and grapefruit. This is one of the quintessential date night designer fragrances on the market, or really, ever. One of the knocks on the One Eau de Parfum is the performance. It's so-so, but way better than the Eau de Toilette. And for that matter, it has more richness, more depth. It's smoother than the Eau de Toilette. It still retains that, that sweetness, that sexiness, that, that spice and that alluring kind of feel. It ramps that up to 11. The One Eau de Parfum to me is one of the best designer releases that have come out in the past 20 years. I would bet you if I went back and looked at everything from 2000 until now and picked out 10 fragrances that I thought were the best from that time frame, that this would make the list and it would possibly be in the top five. It's really good. And I think if there's only one Dolce & Gabbana fragrance that you own, this should be it. Sure, it's a fragrance that's gonna be centered more around evening usage or cool weather usage, but it just smells so darn good that that it doesn't matter. So Dolce & Gabbana is the one Eau de Parfum, number one Dolce & Gabbana fragrance for me. All right, guys, let me know in the comments below how the Dolce & Gabbana fragrances shape up for you. What's your top five or top three or just your favorite? As always, thank you guys for hanging with me. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.